There's our little off-grid cabin, and here is our power system. There it is, three kilowatts of solar. And it's not enough anymore. Rose wants more. <laughs> is it just me? It's you, basically. Oh, okay. So we're gonna need to supercharge our solar power system. And Rose, with your handy dandy wires, she's gonna help us do that right now. <laughs> It all comes down to fridges and freezers. Rose just plugged in a cheese cooler. And it basically, it basically broke the bank. It's just <laughs> like this, we, we run a ton of normal stuff. None of that matters. It's all about the fridges and freezers. Because the fridges and freezers run all day long. We've got all these lithium ion batteries, four of them at 48 volt. They're fantastic. This is the battery monitor. It's my favorite electrical thing in here. This is the Magnusine inverter and it's, what is it? 4400 VA. This is the solar charge controller. It's an old one, Xantrex, and it is MPPT6150. And of course, then it all just goes to a normal electrical panel. The MPP stands for maximum power point. The 60 means 60 amps. That's all it can do, but we'll come back to that. And 150 is its open, uh, open circuit voltage, so it can handle 150 volts on the input. You might say to yourself, okay, 60 amps, that's all I can put in and that's all I can get out of this Xantrex. And so 60 amps at roughly 50 volts, that's three kilowatts. That's all I can do. And I have three kilowatts of solar right now. So it's it, I'm maxed. There's nothing I can do. That's a lie. You can right? always do better. Yeah, so you know what we're <laughs> gonna do? We're gonna supercharge this thing. We are gonna overdrive this thing. And it's okay. All the professionals do this, and you should do this too. If you've got a solar power system, you should overdrive it. 10 years ago, maybe not. And I'll, I can maybe explain why, but it really comes down to the cost of everything. Panels are cheap like borscht. So just buy like a ton of panels. Overdrive the system. Also, if you just have a system and you slowly want to build it up, you don't want to replace everything. So we'll get to that and, and I'm going to show you once we add a few more panels, we're going to increase the size of this thing by 20% the solar array. How much extra power does that add? Because will I get the full 20? Technically, I shouldn't be able to because this thing won't let it, right? It'll, it's only three kilowatt. But I am going to get a bunch more power and I hope to do like a cool little graph and it's like super mathy. So I'll do that on my own time and then just show you the numbers. Okay, but what do we actually have to do? Yes. We gotta run some wires. We gotta add a new breaker into here and look, it's almost like I thought of this 10 years ago because we got one empty spot there and we got a couple more panels and we gotta put them on the roof. And since I'm filming, <laughs> Rose is gonna do it. <laughs> Just like Kezia said, filming while you do all the work is way better. Yeah. Huh. Um, okay, let me grab the other panel. Okay. Okay. How are we gonna do this? And film. Huh. Where are all the helpers? Where are all the girls? <laughs> we need them. 
the girls are getting big. Like, they go places on their own now. Gang! Go, Clyde! <laughs> it sucks. I know. It's so sad and exhausting for us. You won't see it, but if I fall, it'll hear the thud. These are heavy. I know. How am I gonna get that up what, to you? What would be good is if you just like kind of leaned it on the ladder and, and then slid it up. it up, you know? And you let the ladder support the top of it. Yeah, you're good. Now what? Yeah, this is a little bit of a, I could have made a bigger doorway. Yeah, goodness. Huh. Good job. Oh yeah, that's easier. You made it. I made it, you gonna help me up? Yeah. Huh. Look. Oh yeah, oh look at all the moss in there. Yeah, this is the north facing side. It's all just wet and mossy. Oh look, we're gonna have blueberries. Or are those huckleberries? No way. <laughs> huckleberries <laughs> on the roof? That is awesome. We're brilliant. People don't even know how to like <laughs> rate, them. like how to yeah, <laughs> domesticate huckleberries. Are you ready for some photovoltaic facts? I'll put it this way. Photovoltaics are kind of polite. If you want to receive power from them, they will give it to you. But if you're like, ah, no thanks, then they're like, okay, I'll just wait here. No problem. They do kind of get their voltage up a little bit, but, but other than that, they're just cool to not send the power. So I'll show you. It is not particularly sunny right now. No. But the solar panels will still put out power in this type of stuff. Basically, there should be an amp or more, right? You but think. clearly, like there's no amps. There's no current coming out of here, right? See that? They can produce the power, but they don't need to. This isn't a dangerous situation. Although, don't take any of this as advice for safety, because that's not what we're... We're not here for safety. <laughs> so... Look, I'm gonna put this on DC, I'll show you something. 41.6 volts. So this is the open circuit voltage, because it's open circuit. But this is where it gets cool. Put it on amps. All right. Now, there's no amps, right? Right? You can't have amps with an open circuit. Right. But what if I close the circuit with the ammeter, like a short circuit? This is crazy. Oh, 2.8 amps. We should get out the so, toaster or something. I know, we could, that would take a long time. <laughs> this is the key to supercharging your solar power system is you can provide excess solar panels to your system. And as long as you don't over voltage your charge controller. Okay, just a second. It almost sounds like I'm giving you advice. Definitely not giving you advice. <laughs> I am going to supercharge my solar charge controller by giving it 20% extra solar. So at the very peak of every day when the sun's perfect, it'll basically limit the power. And just like you saw, the, the panel's okay not pushing power. Oh, I got it! Okay, I got one. There we go, easy. Perfect, you're like an electrician now. So we are just up there on the other side of the wall, but we got it dangling down. I'm gonna see if we can poke it through here. That's not what you would call robust, hey? Oh, looks dangerous in there. Yeah, looks like I never put the strainer leaf in right here. So this is clearly just a temporary connection for about eight years. We should tie wrap these cables and secure them so they don't dangle around. And then, uh, did that, did you find that amusing? Yeah, tie wrap them, I don't know, just 
sounded so... Jeff? I, I thought you were... What? What? <laughs> I'll just tie wrap that there. Just tie wrap that on. I don't get it. It's all good. Are you making fun of me for tie wrapping? <laughs> no, not at all. No. You are? A little bit. Why? I don't know. You love tie wraps. That's great. I know. Look, you got to tie wrap everything. I, I wasn't really making fun. Tie wrap. I was tie just, wrap. That's what we do. I was we just, just bundle things together. Snickering to myself because you love tie wraps. Oh. And that's okay. Okay. Well, get me some tie wraps. Alrighty then. Let's do this. Okay. <laughs> okay. That is neatly tie wrapped. Not like Rose cares or anything. I love tie wraps. Me too. I know. Good grief. I guess I can land this guy. And that should just... Should just... Clip on that din rail. That'll come off. There we go. See? It was that easy. Just needed... Just needed to do that. Now you just have to tighten them all up. Yep. This is not, this is not, this is not a safety video. Or a how-to. No. This is just what I'm doing. This could be the last video I ever make. I could die right now. Okay, Everyone's got to go at some point. And if I'm going to go, I'm going to go making sure that my wife has a cheese fridge. Good news. What's that? We get to put on more tie wraps. Ooh. If I had a helper, I'd probably get her to. Uh, never mind. I'll just. Okay. So I'm gonna connect this one to the positive from this panel. So that's putting them. That's putting them in series. So I can't remember. Did we leave those wires like? Disconnected. Are they just like hanging in there in the air? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, so normally this would be a bad idea. <laughs> so one of these is positive with respect to the other. So this guy got a 50 50 chance. There we go, negative 80 volts. This is my positive. Got the fancy strippers today. Okay, 227 watts, 215, but if I flip this in, it should go up by 20%. You ready? Yeah. Oh, it went up way more than 20%. Wow. It went up like 50%. And that's because those panels are flat and the other ones are standing up. Let's lay the other ones down. <laughs> we should. We, we should lay those ones down, but we should also invent a new system where they're all together and I want to move them back from the edge. Right, yeah. Um, the challenge we have up there, for those of you that are wondering why it, I'm making it so difficult, it's because any surface, like I want to put them on my roof, but it's a flat roof, and it'll have three to four feet of snow in the winter, and I want them vertical. Three feet off the ground, 40 feet long, six feet tall. It's like a huge sail. And to put them that high, you know, I'm going to think about it. <laughs> it's at 285 watts. Turn it off. <gasps> 214 watts. Turn it on. We overbuilt the solar panel, the solar array. And... On paper, you'd be like, it's too much for the inverter. But the reality is it's only too much for the inverter on like magical moments on magical days in the year. And the whole rest of the time, I'm still, I'm gonna get the increase in power. Right. You saw that this added power. But what I wanna do is take a few points through the day and build the graph. Cause then we can use graph paper. And we can graph the power through the day. And each time we measure it, we'll measure it with and then without the new panels. So we can see exactly how much power we're adding on an average day. And you're gonna to wanna to see that because that's like, 
That's like the cold hard facts. So that's what we're gonna do next. It's a rainy one, but that won't stop us from getting you the data. Rainy day, we're at 79%. And over here, look at that tiny amount of power. 338 watts. That's with our new panel. If I switch it out, 350 to 240, just like that. But I'm not gonna stop today. I'm gonna show you what today's looks like, and then tomorrow, it's probably gonna be sunny. So we'll measure it again tomorrow and we'll show you and then you'll know everything. Oh, wow. Okay, this is what I started doing. See all that power? No. It's way down here. <laughs> that was a very dark day. It was a non sunny day. In our history. What I was gonna do was show you a very simple graph. Old system would have been in blue and it peaks at about three kilowatts and comes back down. And the new system is just 20% more, but then, oh, it can't get past three kilowatts because of the charger, the limitation of the solar charger. So it would just sit there and then it would keep coming down. So you would get all this extra power. That's the gap between the lines most of the day and just not here. What ensued was totally different. And so now it's been a marathon of math which is perfect when your kids are homeschooled. Let's look at this. So you saw my first day, and then this is the next day. Got off to a good start, and then what happened here? This is what happens when the, when the batteries fully charge, and then you can't charge anymore, and it, just is powering the load. Whatever loads we plug in, that's what it's powering. The next day was cloudy all morning, and then, oh, the sun came out in the afternoon. And then the next day, oh, it happened again. Charging great guns, got up to around 2,000 watts, and then, boom, batteries charged. So we did one more test, mm -hmm. and we got smart. We, we kept the batteries from charging. <laughs> So we turned off the panels in the meantime, and this is what I got. Another imperfect day. So this starts off great, and then it gets cloudy, and then it gets uncloudy, and then it gets cloudy all afternoon, and then it gets sunny again right at about four o'clock. So you can imagine though, on a perfectly sunny day, this would go way up and down right here. In hindsight, this is actually a great lesson. Solar is not the way you think it is. And the total increase from the old system to the new system, 16%. Mm -hmm. That seems reasonable. We added 20% more panels. Mm -hmm. We didn't quite get the whole 20%. So this was more of an average summer day. And here it is, the total energy we gained in the day, 17.7 .7 kilowatt hours. And on this day, I calculated a 13% increase. So we supercharged the solar system and it worked fabulous. And the girls got to do some super awesome math homeschool. Yeah. And Rose gets to plug in her cheese fridge. And basically I make out like a hero. We also laid the panels down into their summer setting. It is maybe nine o'clock in the evening. I think there's technically some sun on those panels. Probably getting a hundred watts out of all that. You know when you hug your textbook like that? <laughs> Reminds me of high school. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> that was a long time uh -huh. ago. But I knew even back then that you were the one. <laughs> and you're still the one. It won't blow this thing up. When, right. if it's got too much power. At least mine. I don't know about yours. Yours could totally blow up. 